I hum a lot of things to myself, looking like a crazy person. But I'm usually humming with a with a phone, kind yeah. of videoing myself. Humming. That was it. So I, the Captain Marvel theme. I was actually out on a walk, and I came up with the theme and sang it on my phone, and it's still on my phone. And that is the Captain Marvel theme. Great, thank you. What did you do when you found out you were accepted? Oh, I was driving along in the car with my family, yeah. <laughs> I was with my my daughter and my mum and dad. And did she know what the academy is? I, I think they <laughs> vaguely knew what it was, but they knew I was excited about yeah. something, so that was nice. How about you? It was the same. You know, it's a pandemic time, so I was just home, and I found out. And it was it's was amazing. It's such a great honor to be part of this community that we've all loved and admired. I've been watching the Oscars since I was six years old. I haven't missed one. I would wake up at three in the morning in Istanbul and watch the Oscars. So for me, just wow. being a part of this community in some small way, it's been a huge honor. So uh, how did you know music was your thing? Well, I guess my, my mum was a music teacher. My grandma was a violinist. So I've always been in music, but I think I it was I was about five when I watched E.T. And then I remember noticing the score and hearing it in my head afterwards. My sight reading was a bit terrible. So I would always make, pe I'd learn something by ear and then make some of it up. Yeah. So I think that was my foray into composing. I still do that. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> my teacher would be like, that's lovely. It's not what's on the page. But, <laughs> but how about you? When did you decide to become a film composer? I don't think it was really a decision. I, feel, I was five years old when I started the conservatory. My dad was a violinist, but he had to give it up to anything but music so I kind of lived vicariously through me and then I fell in love with, with films. I didn't really even know the film scoring was a job that people have done you know mm -hmm. and as soon as I actually realized wait there are actually people that get hired to to write this and this is this is their thing I was I was really really hooked. You're classically trained as well mm -hmm. did you do you ever feel like you wanted to rebel against just the classical repertoire. Did you ever go through that phase or was it just me? Oh no, for sure. <laughs> I remember um, going to music college and I was, I was learning the violin and I always had this feeling that I kind of want to be creating something a bit, uh, you know, I'm not just playing somebody else's music. But I'm really grateful to have had that experience yeah. and I think it's so useful to have sat in that position and yeah. to have that kind of skill set. Yeah, I, I did a master's in, in film composing. I went to film school. Yeah bringing that love of music and film together as well. It's, it's, it's such a brilliant job. I'm, I'm so happy to be doing it. I think it's so important to kind of get, you to know the rules so you can break them. That's yes. what I always uh, will say, because I think a lot of the classical education that, that we get when we were young, I mean, I, I, I hated figured bass and all of that stuff. I'm like, where am I going to ever use this stuff? And then you start realizing, you know, just in terms of voice leading and, you know, a lot of the things that, that, that we do, how, it becomes automatic. It's, it's like a emotional and intellectual muscle memory. Darkest Peru, a vast, unexplored wilderness shrouded in mystery. And how did you get into uh, to film music? I had a um, an ex-boyfriend who did a gap year working at Abbey Road as a runner. Oh, cool. So when I was still at school and I would go and see him and sneak in the back of Abbey Road and Trevor Jones yeah. recording A League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That oh, was wow. that was like watching that being recorded and I was just in there all day like oh, wow. And then yeah. Trevor invited us to the premiere. So seeing that kind of glitzy side of a premiere as well. I think that got me completely hooked. And really? So the premieres are the part that I dread. <laughs> I, I like everything else before it and the premieres. <laughs> I've been a musician my whole life, but what I really loved was storytelling and, and films. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a part of it so badly because it was it was magic for me just to see a film come together from a speck of an idea to this thing that we sit and watch with our popcorn. It's like <laughs> it's it's incredible. I think it's it's pure magic. No matter no matter the budget, no matter the process, I think the fact that anything that we watch gets made is a miracle. And music was the the language that I knew that could be a part of, that could be my contribution to filmmaking. Mm. Give him the parchment! I can't! Yes, you can, actually. Oh. You just say, here, and you throw it out. Oh, right. And then I'm sure they'll happily let us go. go. 
Okay, okay, okay. How do they keep finding well, us? You're basically a walking disco oh, ball. I, I've got really interested in um, stand-up comedy recently. I'm like reading Judd Apatow's book. He was talking about how there's like this pain at the beginning of trying to start the idea off, and then after a certain point, it starts writing itself. And it's right. like, yeah. it's always the beginning for me. That's. Yeah. It's like, I've got nothing, I'm staring at a blank page. When it all starts coming together and, and you've got into the project and it's you're, you're watching and you're like, oh, I know, that should be that theme. And I love yeah. that moment where right. you've, you've kind of lined the pieces up and, and yeah. it feels like it's easier. I don't know about you. You need to like the pain of creation to, to do what we do, I think, right? Mm -hmm. For me, a lot of times, it's just right before it. That's like for Captain Marvel, I remember. I was in the studio for two days and because it was already announced that I was scoring it, so I was getting all these messages from people saying, oh, this theme better be good, it should be timeless, it should be so this, it should be so that. I'm like, thank you for the pressure. So <laughs> I remember sitting in the studio for two days just trying out different things and not being happy with it. So in those situations, I actually get out of the studio mm. and um, I, w I go for a walk. There's something about writing a theme just humming the mm, theme. Yeah. If you need a tune, a proper theme for for something, um, I need to be able to sing it. Paul McCartney was saying for coming up with songs that if you if you hum something, you come up with an idea and you can remember it the next day. So you kind of sleep on it as well. Yeah. I think if it's got that sort of durability that it sticks in your head for a long time, because sometimes you can go back and record something and. Yeah. I think if it also sticks in your head, it's kind of a good test for it as well. If yeah. that makes any I sense. think the next morning test is a really important one. Yeah, there's a, a trombone group mm. and my friend filmed them playing the Loki theme. Yeah. And it's just like that was that was something I hummed into my yeah, yeah. <laughs> into my phone. And now there's people associate it with this character and yeah. they want That's to play really it in a school band. Well, once you hit the school yeah. band, you know, you made it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really what it is. That's the <laughs> it's just amazing. It's so satisfying. So as composers, we have to wear different hats sometimes. And we're, we're the musician, we're the writer, and we're the producer. And uh, can you talk a little bit about the different roles that, that we have? I kind of enjoy all the different parts of it equally, yeah. but I, I never enjoy finishing. I always feel like I want to keep tweaking this, or maybe I could add some more. I, I find it really hard to kind of reach that cutoff point where you have to deliver a cue. Yeah. Um, and stop mixing something. I think yeah. that's the worst part for me, is letting yeah. go. Letting go and but, knowing when yeah. it's enough, right? Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's the key, like when, when do you stop adding more? Um, yeah, I think that's, that's a pretty important part of the process. And I think a lot, a lot of times deadlines really help with that because when you, when you know you have to finish something by the next day, you only have that much room to, 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 to play around with it. So mm -hmm. that really helps. If you were to go back to, yes, there's a time machine and you saw yourself, what would you tell your younger self? I, I definitely think when I left film school in early 2000s, I, there was a real lack of women in the industry composing. I didn't really feel like I had a place. I kind of was made to feel like a second class citizen at that point in time. I went back to playing the violin professionally, which in hindsight was brilliant because, you know, sitting in the orchestra, it gives right. you a lot of skills and tools and orchestration ideas. But um, I wish I'd carried on and, you know, had some perseverance because, you know, we're proving that there is a space for us. And, and I think a few years later, it, it's really opened up and the industry is really changing. Absolutely. But, yeah, I don't know, what would you say to your younger self? I'd say, don't worry too much, it's all going to be okay. <laughs> I, it's still an advice to myself currently. I would, I would worry less and just keep with the flow. Yeah, that sounds like good advice, just yeah. generally for everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this has been so great. It's mm -hmm. lovely finally meeting you in person. It's just been such a pleasure getting to meet and chat with you. Oh, thank you. It's so exciting to join the Academy and, and get to meet you. It's just. So many exciting things all at once. Well, and more to come. <laughs> For you too.